he lived to die for his own he sacrificed our sin and shame he washed away oh the prize our savior
Very good morning to those of you here on site uh, and those online. Uh, very good morning. Uh, this is the start of our two weeks of missions week. And this morning, I'd like to begin our time together just to take some quiet moments to think about our week uh, and think about how God has been faithful uh, to you this week. So let's take some time, 20, 30 seconds, and then I'll get us to rise to pray together. Let's do that together. Ten more seconds. Shall we rise to our feet as we pray together? Heavenly Father, we gather as your people this morning as we prepare ourselves to sing praises to you. God, we come to recognize that it is not so much about our circumstance that defines our praise because your character remains constant. Your faithfulness, your goodness, your sovereignty over our lives, over the situations happening around the world. We recognize, Lord, that you continue to be faithful. And so forget for that we continue to worship you despite the circumstances in our lives because you are good and you are faithful. So God, would you help us right now as we sing praises to you. May we focus on your character of who you are. We give you praise and all the honour. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. That's right, because of who God is. It's a great God. faithful God. We can live in faith and not be
do so because our God is a good God, great God, faithful God. And truly, His mercy endures forever. And let's try with the heavenly, and try with all the nations to praise our God and declare, Lord, you are good. You are 
and shed the love of Christ. So today, would you also be that someone the Lord called you, where He has placed you, there you can be that source of love, directing them to Jesus. Would you be that neighbour, that sibling, that parent, uncle, auntie, that friend, that name that is placed in your heart right now? Would you just say, Lord, help me to love. Oh Lord Jesus, may our heart beat as one as yours, so that Lord we can love and care for others the way you have cared for us. Help us to answer the call to bring your love and your hope once more. Lord, we We need to pray like never before. We need the power of your Holy Spirit to open heaven's door. Spirit, touch your church, serve the hearts of men. some amongst us. Maybe the Lord in the past has put a people group in your heart, a country, a nation beyond our land. I pray today you will meet with the Lord again. Oh Lord, we humbly come before you. We don't deserve of you what we ask, but we yearn to see your glory, oh Lord, restore our dying land. We humbly come before you. Would you come and pray? We don't Would you intercede? You know the Lord hears our prayers. You know His desire is for all to come to know Jesus and none to perish. So won't you come and intercede right now? And ask the Lord to use us. To use us. For His love. Try and tell 
16, 17 the words of Jesus for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but in order that the world might be saved through him eternal God and heavenly father we come before you as your people across the generations and as your people this morning we recognize your heart and your love not just for Singapore but for all the nations Lord would you continue to stir in our hearts a love, a passion for the kingdom because that alone is what matters the most because the things of the world will fade away. So Lord, would you continue to help us to fix our eyes on you. And as we begin this week in our missions week, Lord, would you help us open our eyes to see how we can participate in the ongoing work in our local church here in Covenant EFC that we may play our part to invest in things that matter for all eternity. So Lord, would you begin that process even right now as we hear from your word later on. So God, we give you praise and all the honour as we sing praises as we get a glimpse of what it looks like when you return. Where all nations, all tribes, all tongues will come to confess that you are Lord. And for that day, we look forward to it. But until that day comes, Lord, help us put our hands to the plow to be participating in your kingdom work. So God, we give you praise and honour. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Over here, you see the flags represented. These are not just random flags of different countries in the world. These are flags of countries to which Covenant EFC has a part to play in our ongoing work in advancing the kingdom of God. And so right now, as we begin our missions week today, we have three things that we want to be praying together corporately as one body. So on the screen right now, there are three prayer pointers. And I'm going to lead us to take time every one minute to pray for one prayer pointer. So let us focus our attention now to the first prayer pointer. The first is in regards to the Christians who are living in nations where they are persecuted for their faith. Um, and let's pray together that God will strengthen them in the midst of this persecution. So let's take one minute right now to pray together and then we'll move on to the second pointer. Shall we do that? Let's pray together. Come. Thirty more seconds. Come, let's press in. 
pray for the nation of Israel as well as they experience terror attacks yesterday night. Amen. Let's pray now for the second pointer. Second pointer. And the focus is to, to pray for the salvation of the lost in the nations. Those who have yet to know who Jesus is and made their, put their faith in Jesus. Let's pray for these people. Think of particular names right here in our shores here in Singapore of different nationalities. It could be your domestic helper. It could be people that you know personally. Pray that the Lord will open their hearts to receive the gospel. Come, let's pray. Twenty more seconds. Let's pray now for the third and final point. Let's pray for the next generation of disciples to hear and answer God's call in their lives to be His missionaries wherever He calls them. Here in Singapore or abroad. Come, let's pray for the next generation. Pray for specific names, people that you know that have the call that they might be bold and obedient. Pray for our own missionaries. Pray for our youths. Thirty more seconds. Let's pray together. Eternal God and Heavenly Father, we stand together as one body represented across the world here in the local church in Covenant EFC Lord we desire to be missional in everything that we do because that is your heart for the world Lord would you continue to stir in our hearts a passion for your name passion for the world to see that the only hope they have is not found in things of the world but is found in a person alone and the name is Jesus Christ the son of the living God and for that we bring before our prayers knowing that you hear them knowing that you will answer them in your time in your way for your glory so God, we commit them into your hands. In Jesus' name, and all God's people say together, Amen, Amen. Before you get seated, would you turn to someone next to you and say, you are on a mission. Praise God. Take a seat. On behalf of our senior pastors, Reverend Tan Kei Kyung and Reverend Tony, I would like to welcome you here on site uh, and those online. It's a joy to be with you here once more on a Sunday. This week is our start of our missions week. Every year in our church here in Covenant EFC, we dedicate two weeks, two Sundays to help 
all our people to recognize that missions is not something that we outsource to people, but missions is a responsibility, a call as disciples of Jesus to fulfill in where God has placed us. And so this week is the start of the first of the two weeks where we hear the reports of what's happening in and through our church, particularly through our missionaries, through the different works that we are doing here in Singapore and abroad. And as such, before we continue, I'd like to welcome those in particular who are new in our midst. So if you are new or if you have brought a friend uh, to service for the first time, could you kindly wave to us so we can welcome you and give you a welcome gift. Anyone in our midst? Yes, over here. Welcome. Welcome. Over here at the front as well. Welcome. What a joy to be with you. Uh, those online as well, in the QR code, in the e-bulletin later on, you will please scan the QR code and we'd love to connect with you after the service. Again, if you are new, please do not rush off after the service. We'd love to get to know you after and have a coffee with you. And with that, I have some key announcements for us to take note of. First and foremost is our e-service bulletin. Now, from... from few weeks back, a few months back actually, we have transited from paper to e-bulletin. Uh, and in that will contain all the information you need and require. Uh, and in particular, our weekly ser sermon outline that you can follow along. So you can scan a QR code now to follow along with us. And with that, we're going to continue our time uh, with our offering as we continue our worship to Him. On the screen right now, there are two QR codes. First is our general fund, which is the running of our weekly expenses in our church and New Life Community Services, which is our social services arm uh, to the community here in Singapore. So I'm going to give us some time right now to give as the Lord leads and then I'll close us off in prayer. Let's pray. Father, we bring before you what we have given. We recognize that it's not just what we have in our financials, but Lord, it's all our lives that belong to you. And the act of giving back to you is really a reminder, a recognition that all we have belongs to you. So Lord, would you not just Help us to give of our finances, but more importantly, the life we live, may that be a pleasing sacrifice and offering unto you once again this morning. We give you praise and honour in Jesus' name. Amen. I have two announcements for us as we are entering Missions Week. The first uh, is that on the screen right now, you will see uh, ways to which you can be involved in our missions uh, here at Covenant EFC. So you can take a picture, uh, scan the QR code, and Pastor K. Kyung later on will explain more about what's happening. Okay, but you can scan the QR code right now to see how you can be involved in missions here in Singapore. The second thing is for those of you who, here, who are here on site in particular, we have organized something in the foyer later on for you to take a look at what's happening uh, in the different missions work that we are doing across the world uh, and also for you to be praying alongside the different missionaries who have been sent out by our church. Uh, so you can take a bookmark later on, put it in your desk or whatnot uh, to remember to pray for them. And with that, would you put your hands together as we welcome our speaker for today, Reverend Tan Kei Kyung, as he gives us the message for this morning. Thank you, Tim. Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. So delighted to be here. Today we'll be preaching from John chapter 20, verse 19 to 23, entitled, Father, Send Us. It was a tragic and devastating Friday for the disciples and the followers of Jesus Christ. Their anticipated hero, Messiah, who was supposed to free them from the oppressor, was cruelly nailed to the cross, and now he lays dead in the tomb. 
their hopes and dreams were shattered. They felt defeated and probably disillusioned. Then came the usual Sunday morning. But humanity's destiny was changed forever. For the angel declared, He is not here. He is reason. Yes, He is reason. But thank God He didn't disappear into heaven. He returned to see His disciples, to prove to them what He has said earlier to them stands true. So John's, John's Gospel writes in chapter 20, verse 19 to 23. And because it's not a long segment, I would like us to arise together this morning to read the Holy Scriptures. So let's do that. John 20, 19 to 23. Ready? One, two, go. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his sight. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Pray with me. Father, we have been blessed with much. And your word calls us, dear Father, much will be required. And calls us, therefore, to be your channel of blessings, not just overseas, but right here where we are. Speak to us, O God. We give thanks and pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. What an amazing and precious encounter Jesus had with his disciples, which was captured for our encouragement and perseverance in our faith. Think about it. Here was the greatest day in history, but it was set against a backdrop of the disciples' guilt and shame, great anxiety and fear. For John made it clear in verse 19 that the disciples were gathered gathered behind locked doors because of the fear of the Jews. So one commentator said they were probably holding a consultation on the best method of withdrawing from the city without attracting the notice of the temple police or the Roman authorities. That's one possibility. But there's yet another possibility for their gathering. It was to confirm the rumours that has been going around in town that somehow the body of Jesus was missing and that he appeared to two women, to the few women that was gathered first thing in the morning at the Sunday morning. And then while two men were walking towards on the road to Emmaus, he came alongside and he reviewed the scripture and unveiled himself to them. So as the disciples were mulling in such a mood and confusion, suddenly a stranger stood amongst them. It was none other than Jesus. Their dark room were lighted up that day. And I can't imagine the emotions that they felt then and then. Brothers and sisters, as we read this, in spite of where the disciples were, Jesus appeared to reassure them. You see, ultimately, the victory of the church is not dependent on our abilities but upon the all-sufficient power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Today, we know the Church of God faces an intense opposition to the gospel, and darkness prevails over many lands, Singapore included, prosperous as we are. Therefore, how can we live? How can we preach the gospel faithfully and finish the Great Commission courageously. The passage today tells us it's entirely possible. The words of the Lord Jesus Christ, Christ rang loud and clear. John 20, 20, as the Father has sent me, even so, 
I am sending you. This is John's gospel's uh, equivalent to the Greek commission that is found in Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20. And therefore, let's look at this passage and be stirred in our faith with these two unshakable assurances of Jesus as we go forth in His name. The first is that there is unprecedented peace in the gospel. Think with me, if someone betrays you and, and left you to die on your own, whether in the desert or the longkang, and somehow you miraculously survived and escaped, and should you meet this person one day, what would be the very first thing you would say to this guy? You chicken-hearted coward. How could you abandon me? You deserve to die a thousand deaths. Or, you treacherous, heartless traitor. How could you do this to me after all they have done for you? May you be cursed for a thousand generations. All of you looks too nice to say these kind of things. Yeah? But this was not what Jesus said to his disciples. What was the very first thing he said to these disciples? Verse 19. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. This was no ordinary greeting by the street. Although, yes, shalom is a very common greeting of the day. It was more than that. It was the pronouncement of God's blessing that is wrapped up in the resurrected Jesus Christ and promises. The disciples were obviously overwhelmed and they were numb by this Jesus' appearance. And there might even be some doubt, who on earth is this guy that's standing right here in the room, right? And surely there was no better way for Jesus than to tell them, nah, my hands, look at my sight. I'm the Jesus. And therefore, verse 20 says, when he had said this to them, he showed them his hands and his sight. Now take note that showing the hands and his sight was not simply to prove the identity of Jesus, although that was very important. It was to show them that Jesus is the source of all their peace and restoration, which is what Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5 talks about. I read in the NIV version, which says, The punishment that brought us peace was upon Him, and by His wounds we are Healed. You see, it is a fulfillment of all the promises that the Scripture talks about, wrapped up in Jesus Christ, released to all of us today. Peace be with you. Now, notice at this point, there was a radical switch in the disciples' emotion. You see that in verse 20, part B. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Well, glad doesn't quite say it. Too much, huh? So, so show, for example, let's look at NASB Bible. It uses the word rejoice when they saw the Lord. NIV, I think, is pretty good. It says overjoy when they saw the Lord. So, see this radical switch from guilt and shame, anxiety and fear. And right now, there was a gushing. They were gushing with overflowing sense of peace and joy. Just in case the disciples didn't hear him properly because they were all in a state of shock, Jesus said it a second time. Verse 21, peace be with you. Now you've got to realize the assurances of Jesus are just simply over the top. Totally accepting, totally unconditional. Now, unfortunately, on that wonderful day, someone missed this grand reunion. He didn't get to see Jesus. He didn't get to touch his hands. He didn't get to touch his sight. And then when the disciples tried to convince him, hey, Jesus appeared to us, he refused to believe. He refused to believe. And of course, we know this guy to be Thomas. Now, if you were here that day, you would say to Thomas, Thomas, too bad. Please get over it. Who asked you to go see your girlfriend? Who asked you to go and watch a late night soccer game? You know, that's why you, you miss. Now, we might have said that to Thomas, but not Jesus. Not Jesus. Because eight days later, John 20, verse 24 onwards, which is out of our reading this morning, 
you may say that Jesus did the retake. He, same scenario, they, they were all behind locked doors. He suddenly appeared to them and he said the same words for the third time right now, peace be with you. And he invited Thomas, come touch my hands, come touch my side. All this just for one person, yes. All this just for that one person. No wonder Thomas, Thomas made the most wondrous declaration for all humanity that day in John 20, 28. My Lord and my God. You know what Jesus did there in that room that day? Was simply keeping his promise in what he had already told them. So for example, John 14, 27, and many of us are familiar, peace I live with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled. Neither let them be afraid. John 16, 33. I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But take courage. I have overcome the world. Right, sisters? Let's pause and take all this in on the Sunday morning. Their Sunday morning, our Sunday morning. That you and I can go and share the gospel and finish the Great Commission because there is unprecedented peace in the gospel of Jesus Christ. He sees our guilt and shame. He sees our anxieties and fears. He sees us for who we are and where we are. Because we are not a number, we are not a mass of people to Him. Because each one of us is totally unique and precious to Him, both in here and out there. Each person is precious and unique to Jesus. And therefore, Jesus does not run away from our masses. He steps into our masses. We may lose sight of God, but He never lose sight of us. So peace be with you. Peace be with your family. Peace to the generations represented in this hall and in our church. Peace to Singapore and the nations beyond. Brothers and sisters, I can't tell you how apprehensive and fearful I was when my daughter first told me that she wanted to go to East Timor. Outwardly, we said yes, but inwardly, we were very afraid for her. One, one very specific thing was her eczematic condition. So we prayed so hard. So when we were away in the US, she recovered so well under the care of one of our church doctors. Fantastic. She was so happy. Three days after landing in Singapore, I think it's the Singapore air. Everything blew our proportion. The worst that she ever had suffered for her 28 years of her life. Just three days. And of course, the time came for her to go to uh, Timor on the 12th of February this year, 2023. Our hearts ached for her. And we can only commit and surrender her to God, believing that if God doesn't touch her in Singapore because the air is terrible, maybe Timor God will do something unusual. Land in the Delhi capital next two months, wow, even worse. Pray, 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 pray like mad. It became worse and worse. And she became more and more despondent. And in her sharing with us and both in her telegram prayer book, uh, chat, she said, Lord, why did you send me here? I'm now a burden to my team. I can't do anything. I'm cooped up in the house. I'm a worry for other people now. I'm supposed to come here and serve. So why? Why are you not delivering me? And this was a state of a condition, both when we landed on 13th uh, December up to about February, and then she left. And after about two months, she was relocated, of course, this time to the place that they were supposed to minister called Remisio in the, in the district called Ailu. And I call that the hill countries 
where the Philistines and the, no, <laughs> the hill countries, but the hill country is good because the weather, the, the temperature was below 20 degrees. Excellent Australian Southern Hemisphere weather. And for some reason, and I believe both the weather as well as so much press that have gone in, she began to recover amazingly without any medication. And that's the amazing part of it because it has always been medication that helped, but this time around, it was just God's hand and dependence upon Him. And I think some local honey there. You can't get it in Singapore, yeah. And so, and so she began to recover slowly but surely, and, and God restored her condition to a place where she could go about in the ministry right now for the last six to eight months without hindering her too adversely. And this was her testimony written on the 6th of June in the Telegram prayer group. I would like to share that with you, and she has given me permission to share that. She said, since uh, mo most of you know that my biggest struggle in coming to Timor has been my skin condition. Since saying yes to coming almost two years ago, I've gotten hit by the worst skin flares in my eczematic history. Any logical reasoning told me that coming to Timor was the last thing I should do. Yet, it was completely clear how the Lord was leading me. He assured me clearly on two separate occasions that I was to take the leap of faith and trust that He would take care of the rest. Through many tears and moments of wrestling with the Lord today, I can testify that the, Lord, that the God we believe in is indeed faithful to His promises and able to sustain us for the work He has called us to be, that He has called us to. He has brought healing and deliverance to me in the most impossible of circumstances and exceeded my expectation in providing everything I've needed and more. I go to sleep and wake up every day now without pain in my body and get adequate rest at night, which gives me enough for the day's work. Truly gifts I've never wanted want to take for granted. And she, I'll just read the last, the last part, the song that she mentioned. There's a song by Hugh Song with li lyrics that go, Faith makes a fool of what makes sense, but grace found my heart where logic ends. Peace be with you. As the Heavenly Father has sent Jesus, so He is sending all of us. And we can go forth in faith because there is unprecedented peace in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And of course, not because there's an absence of trouble and affliction. But it is through the afflictions and the trouble that we experience the peace like never before. Secondly, we can go forth because there is unstoppable power in the gospel. Let me read John 20, 22, 23 again. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Now these two verses underscore two aspects of the unstoppable power in the gospel. Alright? It's going to be a bit rough. Stay with me, alright? The first, the power of the Holy Spirit. Now John's gospel contains this very unique account where Jesus breathed on his disciples and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Now, the questions on all our minds reading this would be this How is this breathing, how is this different from Acts chapter 2, Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came upon them? How is it different? And what exactly, if you were there, what would you have seen? What actually transpired? This is on every scholar's mind, on every human who reads this passage. And so one commentator listed seven possible views. Now, if I go through these possible uh, seven views with you, you'll be asleep by then, right? I just raised two considerations, two views which I am more akin to. Number one, it is purely symbolic. That means when Jesus says, breathe upon them, receive the Holy Spirit, it was symbolic of what is to come in Acts chapter 2. The coming of the Holy Spirit and Pentecost. So it was pre sequel pre to the Pentecost, symbolically. So nothing much happened. Secondly, there, are, there were two distinct experiences on the impartation of the Holy Spirit upon them. One in John's Gospel, John 20 here, and one in Acts 2 on the day of 
Pentecost. All right? So these are the two things, two views I want to give to you for consideration. Now, I want to go back to the text right now and see what we can decipher. So when Jesus breathed, this word literally means blue, blow, blue on them. This Greek word is only used once in the New Testament. But it was used 10 times in the Old Testament Septuagint, which is the Greek Old Testament. So one scholar remarked there, he says that this particular verb is more commonly used to describe a stronger and more powerful breathing, best translated as a kind of blowing. Now the exact Greek word was used in the Old Testament, let's say in the Septuagint in the Greek Old Testament, yeah? In Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, you're familiar with this verse. Then the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground of the ground and breathed into his nostrils. This other word is used in Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 9, which we all know envisions the breath, the wind, and the spirit of the Lord that is recreating the temple and the people of God who are in exile. And so in verse 30, uh, 30, Ezekiel 37 verse 9 reads, and breathe, same word, into this slain that they may live. So one scholar concluded here, given this rare use of this verb, the use of it here, now in John 20, is clearly intended to echo the first story of human enlivenment, which is Genesis 2, and an act of new creation, Genesis 37. Enlivenment, new creation. With this, we go back to John 20 again and try to recreate what really happened when Jesus breathed upon these 10 fearful men. How, what really happened? Now, what I'm going to say next is just my opinion and thoughts. Standing on some scholars, not everybody agree on the same thing. So I can't tell you 100% this is what it is. But I, I believe there is some kind of impartation rather than just purely symbolic, nothing happened, just symbolic. Hey guys, wait for the next round. <laughs> I find it very hard to, to accept that view. I, I find somehow when Jesus is there, he's been saying to them, peace, peace, peace to you three times already. Something must have transacted and transpired. I don't exactly know what it is, but something has to happen, right? So in my conjecture and thinking, maybe is there some deepening of the strengthening and conviction did they right now have received some kind of peace and courage inwardly? Is there some kind of a resolve and inner empowering? In my heart and mind says, surely there must be something there. La. Although I do not know what it is. Oh, we have been enough to any spiritual experience in prayer meetings, in camps, in whatever. There, there is an impartation, some of the Holy Spirit upon our life that we cannot explain, but there is a certain impartation. Then, of course, this comes to full demonstration 50 days later on the day of Pentecost. And that's where the Holy Spirit came upon them. And they spoke in tongues and they marked the beginning of a whole new humanity and the advancement of the gospel to the world. So, brothers and sisters, as I said, while we may not be 100% clear what happened in John 20 that day for these 10 disciples, but right now, as post-New Testament believers, we can be 100% clear why. Because the Epistles teaches us that we all need the indwelling Holy Spirit. For what? For regeneration and justification. And we need the continuing filling of the Holy Spirit. For what? For sanctification and service without which it is impossible to live our Christian life, nor to preach the gospel. So my dear brothers and sisters, what changed the New Testament world was the unstoppable power of the Holy Spirit, which is at work in and through the lives of these ordinary ten fearful men. And I trust what the Holy Spirit will do in us and through us for the advancement of His work in this world. This is the first unstoppable power, the Holy Spirit. There's a second, which is the power of forgiveness. Now, John 20, 23 reads, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Now, you read this in the English translation, it, gives you, it can give you the wrong idea that as Christians, we somehow have the power to forgive or withhold forgiveness. Not at all. 
The literal reading, the scholar says the literal reading of this verse goes something like this. Those whose sins you forgive have already been forgiven. Those whose sin you do not forgive have not been forgiven. Now this phrase in this literal transition is in the perfect passive tense in the Greek. Perfect tense means a past action but has present effects, has resulting continuing present effects effect. So this past action clearly refers to Jesus dying on the cross and his forgiveness has already been declared to the whole world so that whoever believes in him, they will receive the forgiveness of Jesus Christ. Full stop. But the, pre- the pa- passive tense tells us it is God doing the work, not us. All right, What has already been done. Therefore, the conclusion is we are simply heralds, agents to declare the good news of forgiveness. We announce the message and the power of forgiveness. We do not create it. So are you still awake? These are two troubling uh, issues in this text that I hope if you clarifies it, next time you read this verse, you will be more enlightened and you can consult the commentaries if you like. Now, brothers and sisters, as I apply this right now, this is an amazing privilege for us as messengers of the good news of the gospel. Because there is an incredible power of forgiveness that is promised in the gospel. Like no other message can. And he has given them to the apostles and by extension to the church to us. So that when when we preach the good news of Jesus Christ, we announce the forgiveness of Jesus Christ. And whoever accepts that, we say, you are forgiven not because we created it, but because we simply announced it. And what a joy to be able to say to anyone who has been caught in any sin and says, the Lord Jesus Christ forgives you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Sometimes maybe it is us that cannot forgive them. But Jesus will forgive them. But we can't forgive them. That is our challenge as human beings. So my dear brothers and sisters, we have such a privilege. And that's why it is unstoppable. There's no message like the gospel. You've already heard the three faith exploit they've been talking, disciple the generations, disciple Singapore, and to disciple the nations. And the outworking of that mission clearly is to return the church to its disciple-making roots and to win the world for Christ. Can we do this alone? Cannot lah. We have many, many partners, churches in the world that we partner with to do this work. But I want to begin by talking about discipling the nation, by talking about where we are, because the nations are all at our doorsteps. First, we have the All Nations Fellowship that many of you are aware and the outreach points that has been uh, done over the uh, pandemic. We have the Bangla, we have the, 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 now the Chinese Fellowship and so on. And it is just moving very fast. Uh, there was a church that just stopped its work somewhere in uh, Lavender. Four bus loads of people will go to that place every week but they were not able to sustain it. And suddenly, the new covenant was doing it. Right? They said, covenant, nah, would you do that? We says, we don't have manpower. You don't have manpower? You got 5,000 people, you don't have manpower? Yeah, we don't have manpower. Yeah. Actually, we can. We have the manpower. But nobody come. Leh. Can you tell your neighbor, are you the manpower? We have the people. We have the opportunities. But we don't have too many people right now. May God move your hearts. Go down and sacrifice yourself. How can I help? Maybe ask. You don't have to do it every week. Maybe you don't even have to do it every month. But if you are willing and if you want to offer yourself, we will find a way to feed you. And through this work, some 64 have been baptized. They are more open than Singaporeans. They are so open to the gospel and they are right here. And we are also very excited since the sending of the three ladies to East Timor. We are seeing more and more young people signing up for various gap months, gap whatever, to go to mission. So, for example, we have quite a number of uh, 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 younger ones before they went to university, they've been attached out to the Southeast Asian countries for about a month or so. That's coming back just totally marveling in God's work in those countries. 
In this coming uh, November, December, we will see 47 youths. These are youths, 13 to 18 years old. They are going out for missions accompanied by 18 adults. Incredible. Next year, we will be processing two new missionary candidates to Japan. Anyone want to go to Japan? Missionary, huh? Not skiing, huh? <laughs> Japan. Nepal, how about Nepal? Not go trekking there. And these two ladies, ladies, not very old, only in their 30s, say we will go. Wow, we are so excited for them. So we are observing that God is stirring up the hearts of many of the younger ones. And I really believe we have a group of younger folks today are not contented with the five C's. Praise the Lord. It's not enough for them. They want something more. They want the Christ. And for that, we celebrate. And there are some of you here who are older. Huh? You already got your five C's ready. But you know, huh? the big C Christ huh? supersedes all your C's. Huh? So God also wants you, by the way, huh? if you are in your 650, 60, 70, and you have absolutely nothing to do. Huh? <laughs> Don't feel unused. Huh? You go to the counter and say, I want to offer myself. We'll find something for you, whether you dare to do or not. There is an opportunity for everyone. In other words, there is. We've got 5,000 people on site. And to tell people, sorry, we don't have manpower. We can't do it. Breaks my heart. And so as we see what God is doing, we all know that a lot of all these things will happen because there's the Holy Spirit that's moving your hearts. There is a message of forgiveness that we're called to proclaim, and it's absolutely what a privilege to do that. And a lot of all this will begin in prayer. And so let me end with this, this story in the second point, which is in Remisio, where these three ladies are right now. There was an old man that was converted, and for many years, he was preaching the gospel and he, and he became too old, he can't move anymore. And he's been praying, Lord, send me a pastor. And so God did. God sent Pastor Angeline from a Presbyterian church in Indonesia, sent her over, and she's been ministering there for the past five years, eight years really. And then now she's, she's beginning to pray, Lord, the work is too much here. Can you send me more people? And then God answered, not just with one person, send three ladies over there. And they are so overjoyed now because there's so much work that is going to happen, and more are coming to do this work. And you see that all, all these simply are an answer to prayer because the gospel is backed by the Holy Spirit and the message of the forgiveness is simply irresistible. Let me close the sermon. John 20:20 20, 20 says, As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you, you, plural, all of us, and therefore, we can go forth with great confidence because of these two unshakable assurances. There is unprecedented peace in the gospel, a peace that can liberate us from our fears and imprisonment and transform us as its peace agents. There is also unstoppable power in the gospel because this power doesn't come from us. It comes from the Holy Spirit and the message of forgiveness frees us from all slavery. So at this first Mission Sunday, we return to the baseline of why we are doing what we are doing, missions. And it's because of the words of Jesus, as the Father has sent me, even so I am, send, I am sending you. We are called to unleash the peace and the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I know there's no better way than to start at the place of prayer. Watch this video. The SPs have uh, done this video to show you some ways we can participate in the months ahead. So let's play the video. Hi, Covenant family. We live in a world that is increasingly unstable. In the words of our Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loon during his National Day rally speech, the international environment is fraught with geopolitical tension and economic uncertainty. 
the global economic order is fraying. Supply chains are splitting up. Countries are layering on multiple protectionist measures. With global warming, the world is also experiencing more extreme weather. From China to Japan to Europe and the US, no region is spared from floods and droughts, heat waves and wildfires. As God's people, do we have something to offer to our unstable world as an unshakable hope? The answer is a resounding yes. For the key to personal, societal, national and global transformation is found in the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. This year, as we place our generations, Singapore and the nations in God's hands, God has placed the gospel in our hands to make such transformation possible. And so as we begin Missions Week today, we are asking God our Father to send us, send us with the gospel in these uncertain times to our unstable world. And we believe God is sending us to two specific places. Firstly, God is sending us to the prayer room. For in the words of Kaaba, to clap the hand in prayer is the beginning of an uprising against the disorders of this world. The prayer room is where we must all begin. We will gather this Friday, 8 p.m. at our three centres for missions, prayer and praise. Get ready to hear how God is touching and changing the lives of foreigners whom God brought to our shores as we pray for the nations. Next Wednesday, 18 October at 9 p.m., we will begin another wave of missions prayer over Zoom and will continue every Wednesday till 29 November so that we can continue to place the nations in God's hands for such a time as this. Secondly, God is sending us to the harvest field. CGs will be going for mission trips at the end of this year. We'll also be engaged once more with a very migrant Christmas. We will have the opportunity to bring joy and hope to our guest workers. Let's put our hands together to the plough and be a blessing. As a church, let's be found faithful to the calling and mission of disciple-making God has entrusted to us so that the world may be one for Jesus, one soul at a time. May God stir our hearts this Missions Week and show us how each of us are to act so that the unshakable hope will be offered to our unstable world through the gospel God has placed in our hands. Have, Have a, a blessed, blessed Missions week. week. Amen. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, I, I cannot imagine what covenant will be like. It's not just individuals that rise to the task. When small groups rise to the task, many, many hands make the work light. And if the CGs were just, if one CG cannot, two CG, if two CG cannot, three CGs, if one zone come together, and I know we're all busy, busy, busy life, is, I know that. And that's why many work, many people will make the work light. And if we all come together, do it even once a month. And think beyond our country right now, if CG's zone adopts a country, a work that is overseas, and you visit and take turns to visit them over the next five to ten years, the work will be incredible. Ten years from now, if covenanters rise to the task, we will be used by God for incredible impact and influence that we know not. And therefore, I challenge you, Follow the leadership of your CG because as CGLs, I know sometimes they tell the pastors and the leaders, my CG very hard to lead. Uh. Very hard to lead. Uh. I lead, uh, nobody follow. I suggest this, nobody say yes. It's so discouraging. You feel the pain of your CGL and then you're going to put things and count to the pastor. And pastor got to account to the senior pastor. <laughs> and senior pastor account to who? Senior pastor cried to God, yeah. If we all arise, this is the code that everything is going to be in the code. You take a picture, there's time for you to process this and think about. But I have crafted a corporate prayer for us today that we can declare today as one united people, not individuals, one, we are the church. 
And so this corporate prayer, by the way, is not asking to give your life to Jesus Christ for the next 20 years in a mission field. No, no. It's just simple declaration of what we believe. And therefore, God will move us to act upon what He has already told us. So are you ready to pray this prayer as a corporate body because of the tremendous mandate that God has given to the local church? Are you ready? If you're ready, one, two, three. Our Heavenly Father, we heard your voice today to go where Jesus went and to be sent as Jesus was sent. For there is unprecedented peace in the gospel. For there is unstoppable power in the gospel. We believe that missions start where we are today at home, in our neighborhood and our nation. We believe that the world needs your peace and power. Use us, O Lord, to be your agent of love and hope. Unite us as one body to pray, support, go, and love others as you love us. Raise up missionaries in our congregation who will answer your call. Send us forth to disciple the nations. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. For you are truly the hope of the nations. We pray this faithfully in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus, hope of the nations. Jesus, comfort for all who want. You are the source of heaven's hope on earth. We are together. Jesus, Jesus, light in the darkness. Jesus, truth in circumstance. your hands as you receive the benediction this morning now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think according to the power at work within us to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever and all God's people say together Amen Amen 
service has come to an end. Please, if you need prayer, please come forward. We'd love to pray for you. Please take a seat as you reflect on our sermon this morning. God bless. Have a blessed week ahead.